Davis kills us Alexander. McCollum staying with him. Spins, gets inside. Left handed off the glass. Oh, what a sweet move. Giddy, tough spot. Back door. What a pass. What a play. And Jada picks the pocket of Trey Young. He'll take it himself. This is the Dart. You're listening to the Uncontested. What is up and welcome to the Uncontested Podcast coming to you live Friday, April 5th from Dave's Hot Chicken in Bricktown, Oklahoma City, where the Thunder, for the first time this season, lose their third game in a row, 126-112 to the Indiana Pacers. I went to against the Pacers this year. I'm your host for the evening, Jacob Niffin. Next to me, I've got my guy, Taylor Peterson. I am stuffed uh, from Dave's Hot Chicken, but what a fun night it was, even if the game wasn't so fun. Yes, we will. Uh, we'll dive into the game in just a second. But the Thunder, or not the Thunder, but the Uncontested's official Thunder watch party took place tonight at Dave's Hot Chicken. We had this place packed out, uh, gave away a lot of stickers, a lot of little goodies, and had some incredible chicken. Um, Taylor, what'd you eat? I had the two slider meal, which is my go-to. There we go. Oh um, God, you just got really loud. <laughs> got loud all of a sudden. Yeah, I got the two slider meal. That's my favorite. Went with medium. Uh, I'm a little scarred from Reaper the last time us three were here with Nick. So, uh, which part so, yeah. of you was scarred? <laughs> Dude, my stomach, my esophagus, <laughs> anus. Am I allowed to say that while we're in Dave's Hot Chicken? Uh, <laughs> I got some tenders, some cheese fries. Got to go with the cheese fries. Everyone that came tonight, I pitched them on the cheese fries. So they had to get the cheese fries. Uh, just an awesome event. Lots of people came out. Even though the game wasn't great, we had a wonderful time here at Dave's Hot Chicken tonight. Uh, literally like my favorite spot in Bricktown. So just super thankful that we got to to host this event here tonight. And Taylor, not our only sponsored event that we have coming up in the next nine days. A lot of exciting stuff coming up. And like you said, the first one will be a week from tomorrow, I Sunday. believe. Sunday. Or Sunday. Maybe tomorrow. Most of these people are probably listening on Saturday night. True. Oh, am I supposed to, to follow <laughs> up there? Okay. Uh, next Sunday is the Thunder final home game of the season. Uh, final game of the season against the Dallas Mavericks, 2.30 p.m. at Paycom Center. At the conclusion of that game, we will be across the street at Spark OKC uh, eating some burgers and podcasting live as you guys are leaving the Paycom Center from the final game of the season. So if you will be at the arena next Sunday night or Sunday afternoon, I guess, please make sure swing by Spark once the game is over because you can hear the post game live at Spark uh, typically, on Sundays, we do our shows at 9 p.m. However, this next coming Sunday, not uh, two days from now, but nine days from now, we will be doing it at around 5, 5.30 at Spark. It's going to be an awesome, awesome time. Just check the weather. 72 degrees. Should be awesome outside. So uh, be sure to stop by and see us. It is going to be a blast. All right. Shout out to Dave's. Shout out to the, the p folks here at Dave's. Uh, they let us set up this huge banner, which is dope as well. So thank you so much to them. Um, everyone I think is now bought in to, uh, watching the Caitlin Clark experience. So, uh, shout out to Caitlin Clark. I take care of the number one overall pick in the <laughs> no NBA draft. Kidding. Um, we got to talk about this basketball game, Taylor, 126 to 112. The Pacers win thunder without Shea, without dub for their third straight game. Uh, it is their third straight loss. The first time they have lost three games in a row this entire season, which is kind of crazy to think about insane when you consider that. The average age of this team is 22.6 years old. Uh, that should not be the case. Uh, but here we are. It comes at a crappy time, kind of down the stretch. The Denver Nuggets lost Thursday night to the LA Clippers. So a win tonight would have pushed the Thunder up to second in the West. Instead, they stay at third. Uh, I believe the Clippers are now three and a half games behind them, albeit there's only six games left. It's a near impossibility that the Clippers do catch them. Uh, so third seed looking more and more likely for the Thunder now. Uh, OKC also sent Shea Gilgis-Alexander home. Uh, they threw him on a plane, shipped him back to Oklahoma City. That sounds like he's like a piece of cargo. Uh, he went willingly, as far as I, I know. Um, <laughs> he did but, not accept my invite to come by the watch party, unfortunately. Yeah, should have came, Shea. But he is back home, so he will not be available Sunday night. J-Dub upgraded to Doubtful today, did participate in shoot-around. Uh, obviously did not play. Uh, that's kind of some of the, the the background, the injury report. But 
big takeaway from this one, Taylor, when, when we talk about the headline of this game, what is it? For me, I think it's got to be Thunder three-point shooting. The Thunder shoots 8 of 30 from the floor, or from three tonight to the Pacers 15 of 35. It's not even like they put up a ton of three-point attempts. They just could not hit three-pointers to save their lives. And we kind of talked about this with some of our friends who were here at the watch party. But when you don't have those primary creators and Dub and Shea, it seems to make the offense 10 times harder. Even when you have a great creator uh, in the form of Josh Giddy, just the way the defense is able to collapse and, and hone in. Like you mentioned, the amount of extra uh, passes it takes to get some of these wide-open looks. In comparison to a Shea or a Dub driving, and you essentially have a, a spot up shooter wide open. Just seemed like everything was 10 times harder than it has been throughout the majority of this season. For sure. Uh, I think the three point shooting is the story of the game. When the other team makes seven more threes than you, you're probably not going to win a basketball game. When you look at the percentages tonight, Thunder shoot 49% from the field. Like you take that. That's a good shooting night. They shoot 83% from the free throw line. They took more free throws than the Pacers. Thunder were 20 of 24 from the line. Uh, rebounds, they tied 39 to 39. You take that. The big things tonight. Uh, Thunder had 15 turnovers. A lot of things felt very self-inflicted tonight. And like you mentioned, shooting 27% from three for the team that's the number one team in the league in three-point shooting. When that happens, you're probably just not going to win a game. Yep. All of that being said, the Thunder score 112 tonight against the Pacers. Like That should be enough to win but you give up 126. I felt like there was way too many times where the Pacers had wide open threes. Um, and when you don't have Shea and Dub, you are not going to win a shootout. You have to really commit to the defensive side of the ball. And the Thunder just gave up way too many open looks tonight. Uh, Pacers shot 52% from the field, 43% from, from three, 90% from the free throw line. When a team goes 52-43-90, uh, that's really hard to overcome. And, and th I mean, that's just kind of where they're at. You were talking about the, the types of threes the Thunder were getting. Uh, lots of conversations tonight about the Thunder. Whenever everybody is healthy, you have two guys that can create for themselves. And when they are able to break down a defense, get into the lane and collapse a defense, it creates open shooters. Those guys don't always shoot. They catch and they drive and they kick, but it gets a defense in rotation. The Thunder just have a really hard time getting a defense in rotation right now when you don't have those primary on-ball creators. Um, and that's just that's kind of where they were tonight. That's where they've been the past three nights. I think a valiant effort. They were up 10 in the first quarter. Yeah. like They were executing well, but it's just as the game wears on, they kind of lose steam. Uh, they lose focus, and especially in those fourth quarters. The Thunder made a push in the third quarter again tonight to get it to four. It's almost the same story as that Boston Celtics game. You, you're hanging around. You're not shooting well, but everything else is going your way. And then the fourth quarter hits, and it just the wheels unravels. fall off. Yeah, exactly. No, I think you're exactly right. Um, <laughs> got somebody coming up with stickers. That's awesome. I also think about the types of lineups that Mark has out there as well. It just seems to be a lot of uh, not a great amount of chemistry within these lineups. I think about, like, for example, the Thunder started Gordon Hayward and Isaiah Joe tonight instead of Casey Wallace and Aaron Wiggins. And it seems to me that Mark's using this opportunity, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but to try out new things. We saw Isaiah Joe on the ball a lot more than we've seen for the majority of the season, if at all. Um, instead of that being Kaysen. We saw more Kaysen in the second half, obviously, because Hayward ended up getting hurt. So that's a, another injury to uh, add to the injury report for the Thunder. But when you don't have the chemistry, like these lineups aren't used to playing with each other, I think that's why we're seeing some of those issues offensively, Jacob, but also defensively as well. Even open, uh, it, you know, not closing out on shooters, uh, missing defensive rotations. There was a time there in the third quarter where Mark calls a timeout because Dort, I bet, or maybe it was Giddy. I think Giddy got pulled for this. Went under a screen on Tyrese Halliburton and that led to a wide open Halliburton three. Yeah. Things like that that we aren't really accustomed to seeing from a really sound uh, defensive team in the, in, the, in the Thunder. Also part of the problem tonight was a little man I like to call TJ McConnell, who, so we are live in Dave's Hot Chicken. I don't see anybody under the age of 12. 
absolutely busted their asses tonight. I mean, just cooked the Thunder. TJ, 16 points, 5 rebounds, 10 assists, 7 of 12 from the field, a plus 22 in a 14-point game. When you look at plus minuses, which you typically shouldn't just look at like single game, single player plus minus, every Thunder starter minus Josh Giddy was a plus tonight. Josh was a minus one. Every Thunder bench player was a minus. Minus Mike Muscala in his seven minutes was a plus three. Um, Pascal Siakam, a minus five. Andrew Nemhard a minus eight. But then you look at the Pacer bench. Plus 18 for Toppin. Plus 14 for Doug McDermott. Uh, plus 22 for TJ McConnell. Plus 12 for Ben Shepard. When the Thunder are down two starters, so they're playing two bench guys. And then that means you're going deeper into your rotation. The, the bench is just that much thinner, and they got absolutely blitzed. I think the Thunder are a deep team, but from these past three games, what I've learned is you're going to have like a nine to 10 man rotation in the playoffs, uh, and you're going to stick with the guys that work with your Aaron Wiggins, with your Cason Wallaces, with your uh, Kenrich Jaylen Williams. Williams. Uh, yeah. Kenrich had a wonderful night tonight. I'm trying to pull up his stat line here real quick. Um, 18 points, eight rebounds, three assists, a block, seven of seven from the field. Two Kenny of two from three. Yeah, Great Kenny is see. rounding into form, which is awesome. Uh, Kaysen Wallace, a minus 29. <laughs> like, that is That's bad. Not great tonight. Um, two points, one of five from the floor. Just not a lot of opportunity for Kaysen. Seemed like he kind of struggled there. Like I mentioned, Isaiah Joe getting the nod in the starting lineup. Uh, Kaysen was kind of the primary, I don't know, even know if you'd call him the primary scorer or scoring option off the bench, but certainly seemed to throw him off his game when he came in. Yeah. I thought other guys played well. Isaiah Joe was good. Uh, Josh Giddy not super efficient, but 14, 9, and 12. Uh, Dort with a pretty efficient 22 tonight, although he only hit two of seven from three. Uh, Chet got to the free throw line a lot, but was pretty inefficient from the field, only four of 12. Chet's been weird. There was a lot of people asking us about Chet. Maybe let's take this time to talk a little bit about Chet's recent stretch. Uh, people here at the watch party were asking you and I both, like, do we think Chet's hurt? Is he, is he just tired? And honestly, he does. It looks like tired legs to me. It looks like a, a rookie player who's come into the league and has played the most games of his entire career in, in, this, in, in, in this stretch of a time period. Um, but he's getting like bodied by Miles Turner, which, you know, a lot of people do that. Mm -hmm. but it just seems like he's not nearly as engaged on the defense side of the ball, even though he had three blocks. Um, and offensively, he's just not nearly as confident as he has been. He just looks gassed to me. A, a lot of the shots look short. He had like some awesome moves to the basket tonight, had a dunk go in and out, which is very strange from him. Uh, just not the, the best night from Chet Holmgren. Uh, a guy like Lindy Waters plays 18 minutes tonight. I know the team is high on Lindy. I think that kind of tells you, all you need to know about how things are going with the Thunder right now when you're relying on, again, Lindy's a great guy, but two-way player, right? Played a lot of G League games this year. He's coming in playing 18 minutes. Um, I mean, good night for him, but if you're relying on 18 minutes from Lindy on the road against a team that is fighting to avoid the play-in in the Eastern Conference, like that's probably not a recipe for success. Well, meanwhile, Jay Will gets 12 minutes and Wiggins gets 16, so a minute less than Waters. Uh, if Mark were asked about it post game, he would say, well, we liked what we saw from Lindy. We wanted to run with it. Honestly, I think this just kind of goes to show you that the Thunder, I don't want to say they, they don't care about winning these games right now, but they understand that they're locked into that top three seed, essentially. It's time well, to get Dub and Shea. Games, right, so yeah, true. At the top three. Dub and Shea healthy, well. but also putting guys like Isaiah Joe into the position I talked about earlier, giving Lindy a little more burn off the bench rather than just playing Kaysen and Wiggins a ton. I kind of would like to see that and see them win this game by playing Kaysen and Wiggins a ton, but that wasn't the case. Mm -hmm. And I think that's kind of what you're really saying. hasn't played a lot on yeah. this road trip, and that's kind of surprising to me. Um, I kind of wish they'd play him a little bit more just for the plethora of things he can do. I talked about guys not being able to create their own shot and break a defense down. feels like Kaysen and Aaron Wiggins like might be the best options to do that, and yep. they just didn't really get an opportunity. Um, but maybe it's also like some managing minutes to keep guys fresh. Like you said, you're basically guaranteed a top three spot, get guys ready for the playoffs next week. Not next week, two weeks from now. Is that not crazy? I was just about to say, that's insane. 
it's kind of hard to believe. They have one more road game Sunday, and then they come home for a stretch of four, and then it's uh, it's playoff time, it's playoff basketball time, play in you know? time, which will be nice. The Thunder get an additional five days rest there, I believe, off the top of my head. That will be much yes. needed. Uh, and then it's playoff basketball in OKC. Um, not that it matters at all, but a quick update from around the league. Um, the Timberwolves play at the Suns tonight. That's a pretty one for standings. That one hasn't tipped yet at their time of this recording. Uh, Clippers and Jazz play tonight. The Jazz kind of suck, but the Clippers are on a second night of a back-to-back. Um, Mavs and Warriors locked in a tight one, and the Pelicans... Lose to the Spurs. Ooh, interesting. So we that that if it is Thunder at three, that six seed is still going to be very much in the up in the air. Um, Pelicans have been struggling a lot lately. Uh, also, shout out to the Bucks who might lose to the Raptors, who, who the uh, the Wolves beat by fifty the other night. Um, spoiler alert: Can I get one more Bucks? Bucks. It's so I, much harder to do. Uh, I feel like I've been yelling the whole night. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think the Bucks just might suck. Like they just haven't been good, like at all. Um, Rockets also getting blown out by the Heat, which is good for the Thunder because the the Thunder own that Rockets pick. So true. So Taylor, one more game on the road against Charlotte. What are you looking for in that upcoming game? <laughs> well, here's the uh, low hanging fruit. I'm looking for J Dub to play Sunday. He was upgraded to doubtful. Uh, I think I saw somebody somebody at the watch party told me game time decision, although I'm not sure. I never saw that. Uh, but he also went through shoot around this morning, which I think good is significant. Point. And Shea wasn't present. Well, because he was back Shea, in OKC. Yeah, he was in Oklahoma City. <laughs> um, and I know it sounds kind of ridiculous to say, but I will be looking to see if Dub, Dub plays Sunday since he wasn't sent home with Shea. Um, so if you get Dub back, that obviously helps things tremendously. But then the Thunder three-point shooting. I think I talked about this on one of the podcasts last week. Um, but the Thunder are going to have to convert these open three-point attempts if they're going to beat some of these teams. And I would really like to see that. We, we need to gain some momentum heading into the playoffs, even if we're down some of our big-time players. Definitely. So speaking of gaining momentum going into the playoffs, three road games, three losses. Knicks fans have to be so pissed off that Shea and Dub played that one game. Shea hit that game winner and then just Crazy. hasn't played again since. Like The Knicks got to be pissed. Um Things you have learned in the four-game road trip here that you think are going to be impactful or translate to postseason basketball for Oklahoma City. That's I have two Ooh. questions for you. That's question number one. I think we are going to see a lot of small ball come playoff time. That's no shocker. Uh, we figured that was going to be the case. But Jacob, after this recent stretch, even as good as Jay Will has been, I kind of think we aren't going to see a ton of Jay Will during the playoffs, it's going to be a lot of Kendrick Williams at center and maybe even Gordon Hayward. Uh, maybe Don't that's my that. next one. G Gordon did leave the game tonight with left lower leg soreness, I yep. think. Is that the same calf that he injured this Ooh, season? I didn't even think about that. It's a good good point. I'm trying to think of the, the leg sleeve that he wears and trying to picture which like leg it's, it's on. You got a 50% chance of being right. <laughs> like my chances. Um, Chet would have shot 50%. Maybe related to Gordon, game. we talked about this on uh, Wednesday's podcast, I believe. But Aaron Wiggins needs more minutes and Gordon Hayward needs less. So come playoff time, I would like to see more Wiggins playing with the confidence that he does and just making things happen in comparison to Gordon Hayward, who's had every opportunity to with Shea and Dubout and just cannot, I mean, refuses to shoot the ball or make anything happen. I thought he was decent tonight. He had seven points. Um, he shot three field goals, uh, three free three. throws. Would you say that if Gordon Hayward walked in here to order Dave's hot chicken right now? <laughs> yeah, be like, Gordon, see that that spice level up there? Need you to bump it up. Bump it up a couple spice levels for us. I think he could afford every spice level with the contract he has. <laughs> if I got paid uh, per shot the way he does, I uh, you'd never see me again. I'd retire and move far, far away. <laughs> um, what else? What, 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 I, what do you have? I think you found your playoff rotation. Like that's where like I'm that. at. You you kind of touch on it with specific guys, but Casey Wallace, Isaiah Joe, Kenrich Williams, I think Jay will will play matchup dependent. If it's a Kings matchup, I think Jay will plays. Yep. If it's a Pelicans matchup, I think Jay will plays. Um, if it's a Warriors matchup, Jay will I don't I don't play. see him play as much. Uh, so I think 
Jay Will uh, is kind of up in the air as far as matchup. But I think you've figured out your Aaron Wiggins, your Cason Wallace, uh, your Ken Rich Williams, your Isaiah Joes. Those are going to be like your four main guys off the bench in the playoffs. Uh, and I think that starting five is going to, like, I want to be surprised if all five of those guys play 40 plus a night. Yep. I think that's kind of the so. direction we're trending towards. Um, so that was question one. Question two. Uh, I'm stalling right now because I totally forgot what question two was. Um, <laughs> where do you think they're going to end? I don't know if that was question two, but that's what I'm going to ask oh, you. Oh, I'm, I'm going to say three. I think I said three on Wednesday show because, like I said, I didn't think Dub or Shea were going to play this week. Um, I remember I'm question two now, but finish answering. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Three. I'm, I'm coming at three, too. With this three game losing stretch down the sh- down this the stretch of the season here, the first three game losing streak of the season, has that changed your opinion at all about what this team can do in the postseason? Like everyone talks about playing your best basketball late. They've lost three straight. Obviously, they've been without their two best guys. Has this changed your opinion on what will happen with postseason basketball with this team? You do bring up a good point and that it's not just like missing Dub and Shea. It's we talked about the missed three point shots, uh, how much better this team is when they're knocking down those shots and spacing the floor. We uh, the defensive effort hasn't been there and there's mul- a multitude of reasons for that. But it is a little concerning that the Thunder aren't playing their best basketball at the right time. All that being said, I think all those questions are solved if Shea comes back and he's completely healthy. I think Dub's going to come back and be just fine. In fact, if this were two months ago, he's probably playing tonight. Um, but if Shea comes back and is completely healthy, that allows like the Aaron Wiggins, the Isaiah Joes, the Casey Wallace's, who've kind of found the Josh Giddy, who have found their footing here over the past week or two, are playing more confident. That also kind of starts to click at the same time, and you have a really dangerous basketball team. So that's kind of where I'm at. I think I'm with you. Um, it doesn't make me super scared because I feel like guys have separated themselves these past four games. Uh, the only thing that I worry about is the tiredness of Chet. Yes. They need they need that week off. Um, because if you remember, post-All-Star Chet was a badass. Yep. And they need that level of Chet back. Um, also, again, this is going to be old news because like we're recording a live podcast and people will probably listen on Saturday. Uh, but the chat is blowing up about the Wolves Phoenix matchup tonight. Uh, which just tipped and is currently 13-0 Phoenix. Woo. So uh, that might be good. Yeah. If well, Denver that. lost. We lost. Wolves lost. Nobody gains any ground. It's a push. Uh, that would be okay. It also kind of makes me super scared to play Phoenix. I know we're 3-0 and <laughs> against Phoenix this season, but uh, they've been on a heater. They have. They've been much better. So, it helps when Booker is scoring a lot of points. And Yeah. I, I want to ask you your preference basketball. for the playoffs, but... Sunday show is going to be all about uh, playoff drafting matchups. who we like and playoff matchups. Uh, so we will see that. Also, the chat mentioning uh, it was the left calf earlier this season for gay uh, gay word. That's <laughs> going to get me canceled on the internet. <laughs> hey word. Um, he it's the same leg, so that's not good. Is it worrisome because you don't want the guy to be hurt? Yes. Is it worrisome <laughs> because you're going to miss his production? Not no. so much. I think that's very fair. Yep. Uh, anything else for this one? That yeah, chat's already canceling me. <laughs> right, Jacob's already canceled after our watch party. Forward, or instead of Gordon, it'd be Horden Gayward. <laughs> that's what I went with there. That's uh, yeah. Uh, well, hey, just again, special shout out to everybody who came out to watch us podcast live. Those of you all who are staying here watching us. And last time we had three people stay. This time we have. It does, it's not quick math. It's like seven. Yeah. Uh, but we're growing. Damn it, we're growing. <laughs> it was so, just an awesome night. Uh, we had uh, some people driving like two hours. I think somebody came up from Dallas. Just really, really cool. Great community of Thunder fans. And stay tuned. Like Jacob mentioned, it's not just uh, this upcoming Sunday. We have something planned. A lot of fun, exciting stuff coming up for the playoffs. So stay tuned. Definitely. Um, I wonder if people... So on Wednesday, Nick told everybody that if you hit him up on and like DM'd him on Twitter and said you were coming, he would Venmo you money for your first beer. I wonder if anybody did that to get the Venmo money and then just didn't show up and <laughs> stole Nick's money. Um, I hope that happened. 
If it did, DM me and I will double Nick's money because you stole from Nick. <laughs> yeah, we, we didn't take attendance. No sign in sheets tonight. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys so much for tuning in. We will be back Sunday night, 9 p.m. Central Time, uh, after the conclusion of the Thunder versus Charlotte Hornets game. Uh, also known as the Thunder vs. Thunder game, as Charlotte yeah. has basically all of the former Thunder players this season. The Poku revenge game. Poku vs. Chet is going to be an incredible matchup uh, <laughs> that I will simultaneously like love it and hate it at the same time, especially if one of them cooks against the other. What if Poku True. gives Chet like a 2010-10 game? <laughs> I won't be feeling and, like, nearly as, as good about the playoffs. I yeah, neither will I, but I will feel great for Poku. <laughs> That's right. Um, simultaneously, if Chet cooks Poku, uh, I will feel just fine. Yep. So. yep. All right. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you guys for coming out to Dave's Hot Chicken if you did tonight. Uh, we really appreciate the support. I know Dave's appreciates it as well. Uh, I think a whole middle school class just came in here, so we are going to hop off this show, and we will see you guys Sunday. Until then, and as always, Thunder up. Thunder up.